Dan and Jennifer, appreciate you joining me today. Now, you are involved in a lawsuit against the Rockford Public Schools out in Michigan over pronoun usage surrounding your daughter. Dan, can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Yeah, while we were working with this school closely to uh, address uh, her academic needs in regards to her autism, it came to our attention that uh, the school was uh, actively deceiving and hiding us and hiding from us the fact that they were transitioning our daughter from uh, being a girl to a boy using a uh, boy's name and pronouns. And this came to our attention by uh, paperwork that they had given me. And one of the school employees had inadvertently forgotten to change one of those uh, male names and pronouns. Jennifer, when you discovered this, and and again, you discovered it by accident, it sounds like, what was going through your mind? At first I was like, they must have somebody else's child's information in here. This was clearly an error is my first thought. Um, and so we ended up emailing this specific uh, staff member asking them if this was an error. And then when we didn't receive a response back from them, which I thought was interesting, um, we started to kind of dig a little bit more and say, well, why would they not respond to an email over important information like this? So once we found out what was really happening, uh, clearly I was just in shock, disbelief. And Dan, you, I imagine at that point, once you found out, you started to dialogue with the school, ask them perhaps not to do what they were doing. What were those conversations like? What, what happened next? Well, I actually kind of roll that back as we were trying to decide what our next step would be because we started putting some things together. We're going, I think this is might be what's going on. How do we want to handle this with the school? Later that same week, uh, Jennifer found in our daughter's backpack a book that had been given to her uh, by the school counselor from the school counselor's personal library uh, that our daughter was kind of hiding from us. And that book uh, contained uh, a story about a homosexual boy and a confused boy and the homosexual boy trying to kind of coerce the boy into a relationship with him, very explicit. Um, and so when we found that, it was sort of like, all right, that's we got a polar immediately after which then we are, um, had a meeting with the school principal thinking, I wonder if he even knows, does it, you know, is where, how broadly is this going on in the school? And so as we spoke with him, uh, it came to our attention. I just quickly that he said to us, look, you have to understand this is the school policy we're mandated to do this. Uh, the desires of the children outweigh those of the parents. And there's not a whole lot we can do in that regard. So you might have just saw alarm on my face with that last statement, right? Because th that's what this is really uh, about for parents is yes. parental rights. Um, Kate, I want to come to you on this for a moment because some people might not be aware of this, but this is the policy in some districts, and we're seeing it in some states, that parents are not notified when a child, and I want to emphasize child, has a request to be you know, named by another name, the opposite sex. Can you take us through how pervasive is this issue and why should parents be concerned? These policies have become very pervasive throughout um, a number of states just across the country. These policies where the school district says that if a student raises confusion about their gender identity, the school should jump into action and change that child's names, their pronouns, and not tell their parents. And then you have situations where they're actively hiding that information from parents like they were with the Meads. They were actually erasing the male name and male pronouns on documents and replacing it with their daughter's real name and her female pronouns, anything that they were sending home to the parents to act actively deceive them. Uh, this violates the Constitution because parents have the right to direct the upbringing and education of their kids. But the reason for that is that kids need their parents to walk alongside them when they're dealing with these kinds of issues. Parents know their kids best. They want what's best for them and they need to be involved. A school should never hide information 
from parents. Yeah, and, and that brings me back to to you, Jennifer, on, you know, and, and feel free to share as much as you're comfortable. I don't want to push people to share too much, but how did this affect your relationship with your daughter as this was going on, even once you discovered it? You know, what are some of the parameters maybe and barriers that were put up because of it? You know, that's interesting that you asked that because I was looking back, um, just trying to wrap my head around everything and seeing if there's anything that, that we could have missed. Um, yeah, I get upset about it. We have always told our children that no matter what, whether we agree or disagree with them, we love them no matter what. And we will always love them. And if anybody in the world, we are there for them. They can trust us. We are we are here to speak truth to our children. And I look back and I think that that relationship sort of changed for a little while. Indeed. Um, I could sense some turmoil in her. And I knew there was something going on. Her anxiety was, was through the roof. Um, she was depressed most days. She was missing a lot of school. She didn't want to go to school or I would get a call in the afternoon that she needed me to come pick her up. So I knew that there was something going on and we were working with the school counselor very closely to come up with a plan for her. I was sharing personal information about what was going on within our fi family dynamic as well. And I, I, I thought that we were being transparent. Mm -hmm. And so... Now I will tell you, um, our daughter, she knows who she is. She is no longer confused. She knows that we love her. She knows that she can always come to us for everything. She is thriving. Her grades are up. She is happy. She's like a different child now. And it's it's just, it's it's wonderful that we've got her back. You know, that that is wonderful. I know this is hard to talk about because it's so personal. And that brings me to you, Dan, on just the decision to, you know, to sue over this. You know, a lot of people, they find themselves in these positions and they might say, I don't want to deal with the backlash because I would assume once you go public, people, a lot of people support and a lot of people have opinions on the other side of it. What has led you, Dan, to say, no, we, we want to take action here. We want to right this wrong. Well, when we left that meeting with the principal, all that I could get through my, like the thought that just kept coming back to me was, what if I, we just go away quietly and don't do anything, don't say anything. How many other parents have done this before us? And that even doesn't matter how many are going to come after us. And if I ever had to look at another father or mother who went through this and say, oh yeah, that happened to us too, but we didn't do anything about it. I don't know how I could handle that. And so I just said to Jennifer, I've got to figure out a way to make this right and make it so that they don't keep doing this to other children and other parents, whether it's this specific issue um, or what really is our problem is that they lied to us, mm -hmm. that they deceived us about what was going on. So it isn't, you know, this issue, you know, a lot of people want to make it about the very particular, oh, your problem is just with the boy names and the boy pronouns, and you're making a big, um, you know, a, a mountain out of a molehill. That just happened to be the catalyst that set us off of saying, you no, know, you don't get to lie about anything. Right. This is what you chose to lie to us about, but you don't get to lie to the parents about anything. You don't get to withhold information, change documents, none of that stuff. Yeah. Not only lying to you, but also when these sorts of incidents unfold, you're essentially teaching a child that it's okay to lie to their parents. I mean, you're, you're essentially yeah, stepping in and saying, not only is it okay to lie, you know, we will help you do it, right? And so I think that that element of the story often gets lost in the conversation, that, you know, and we've heard the teachers out in California um, in the Marabelli case talk about that as educators not wanting to be put in a position of having uh, to lie. And, and I think that's important to, to discuss here. Kate, when you look at this case, 
What do you hope to see happen in the end in this particular instance? We want parental rights to be respected. Just as Dan was talking about, parents need information from the schools about what's going on, and a school should never be lying to parents, changing documents, hiding information, instructing kids to lie to their parents, and driving that kind of a wedge between parents and their kids. On an issue like gender identity, that's a very difficult and challenging issue for kids to work through, and they need their parents. So it highlights the problem in that context, but it goes beyond it. We want to see the court step in and ensure that parents can have transparency from their schools and trust that they're going to get the information they need to uphold their responsibilities to their kids to direct their upbringing and education. And and Kate, what comes next in this case in terms of where it currently stands right now? The case is very early on. We just filed it right before Christmas. So we're waiting for a response from the district and then we will be off in the trial court uh, for the rest of the case. Well, I want to thank I want to thank all of you for coming on and, and talking about this. Again, I know it's difficult to talk about. It, it's tough to go public, but like you were saying, you want to make sure that you can help others who are facing similar things all over the country right now. We will continue uh, to cover this and have you back as the details unfold. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us on.